like pretty much every piece of technology from 60 years ago, you know, improvements come over time and render most of the old technology completely useless. But every once in a while, you come across something that was made so well that not only has it lasted the test of time, it actually outshines the majority of its predecessors. Might we have found the indicator version of this? One way to find out. You are probably just as surprised as I am that we are talking about the Kalman filter today uh, and actually possibly saying positive things about it. Um, I've never used this in my trading, but I think when I tested this was probably the early part of last decade. Um, so who knows what my algorithm even kind of looked like back then. Plus, I've seen different iterations of this indicator over the past 12 years. So I'm not sure which one exactly we have, but it is darn interesting. Uh, now, before we get started, just going to put this here. This is what I normally say at the beginning of the video. If you're new, please enjoy, um, but understand you're not going to really understand or appreciate what we do here unless you have started from the beginning. So go to nononsenseforex.com. Get yourself started. We have changed the way technical analysis is done on this channel. So I think you're going to like what you see. But for the rest of us, let's move into things. Now, the specs on the Kalman filter, uh, this was made right around 1960, which is way older than we like. Um, but if I see an older indicator like this, I'll still test it out. And I won't have very high expectations. And I will typically be right not to have very high expectations, but I'll still test it because you just never know. And now, this is a confirmation indicator that at first glance does not look like a confirmation indicator. Looks like a baseline because it is one of those indicators that goes on top of price or on your actual chart as opposed to underneath it. And you'll see what I'm talking about really soon. And as far as being an exit indicator, uh, you certainly could. It's hard for me to say because I've never traded with this indicator like ever. Uh, but just by eyeballing it, I can tell you and you'll be able to see it too. There's some, some pretty intriguing possibilities there. So let's take a look at it now. Even though it does look like a baseline, it is not. It is a color change type overlay to where as soon as it turns kind of greenish there, that's going to be your long signal. As soon as it turns orange, that will be your short signal. Now, you might already be looking for no-nonsense Forex style entries, and you might be saying to yourself, well, VP, if I would have gotten in right here, like your system tells me to do, I would have gotten in a lot earlier than I would have if I just listened to the indicator, which would have gotten me in either there, or maybe there. And my response would be, well, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty big difference there. But as you all know, losses hurt more than wins help. And you would have done that at the expense of, you guys can see my arrow, but I can't. Okay, there it is. All of these losses. <laughs> Those are some pretty bad losses too. So just do what the indicator tells you to do. Um, that is going to be the best scenario 99 times out of 100. You do have those situations like, uh, if you guys remember the Williams percent R video, we're actually doing the opposite of what it wanted you to do was the best move. But that's very rare. I think simply by adhering to what this one tells you, it's gonna be your best option. Uh, on top of that, just by looking at it, because it seems pretty smoothed out in this example, almost seems like it would be a pretty intriguing secondary confirmation indicator. What do you guys think? But anyway, without further ado, let's get to the testing. Now, always before that, quick disclaimer, pause it, read it. And also, let me just go ahead and tell you now, before we get to the testing results, what you're going to have down below in the description, um, you're going to get a link to my automation blog, which has a video embedded on how to test these on your own. Uh, and that blog is great. If you do any kind of coding at all, there's so many great resources on there. Uh, don't miss out on that blog. But you're also going to get the deep dive common filter blog from Stonehill Forex with the tweaked settings that we purposely hide from you on these videos. These videos are meant to be short, easy to follow, less is more type videos. And if you're really interested in the common filter and want to see those tweaks, that link is where you go. And then if you want to download it yourself, we got you hooked up there too. 
So let's get into it on the Euro USD. Uh, this is good. I always like seeing things like this. You know, if one indicator on its own can give you near the return of the average return of the S&P 500, can we all agree that's pretty darn good? Now it took some tweaks to get there. Um, so we all, I always go look at total trades. 18 is not a terrible number. It might be too low for some people because like we said before, this number is going to go down once you start adding other pieces to it. Um, but it's not like, you know, it's like four or five or some of the numbers we saw in previous videos. So certainly not bad um, for a market that didn't start till 1996. Um, but as is often the case, gold is where it gets very interesting. So look at the, I, mean, I don't care what's going on. Look at this here. <laughs> <laughs> this just on the default to be able to pull that kind of ROI on one indicator is crazy. It's so good that even when we tweaked it, it only got so much better. You guys have heard me say in the past to really keep an eye out for indicators that are good on the default settings because they're probably just good indicators. Not that I can't be improved. But your chances of coming across a really good one do go way up when you see this. Now, a very interesting point was mentioned in the Discord forum just today. Somebody said, hey, you know, some of your Dirty Dozen style indicators, you know, i.e. some of your older indicators, are probably going to work better on things like gold because gold is not Forex. Forex has a very unique counter movement that we talked about all the way back in the Big Banks video. That's what makes it what it is. That's why certain things that are old and used to work for stocks and metals and older commodities and things like that don't always work well in Forex because they weren't made for Forex, but they were made for things like stocks and gold. So to see this, I guess is really surprising because those numbers are stupidly high, but the fact that it performed well here and performed better than the EURUSD and Bitcoin, which we're about to get to, does not surprise me. doesn't surprise me at all. Moving over to Bitcoin, still pretty good, took some tweaking, but again, that is not a bad place to start, boys and girls, it's just not. And with 30 total trades, you know, if you trade other cryptocurrency pairs, which, which everybody should, you know, you're going to take that down to maybe 15 or 20. That's a pretty healthy number for one year on the daily chart. So this might certainly be something to consider. I know a lot of you guys have had experience with this indicator. Share that experience down below in the comments if you don't mind. Uh, but make sure you like and subscribe. We have been cranking these out at least once a week. And if you don't subscribe, if you don't hit the bell, you might miss them. An indicator that may change the course of your trading and therefore your life could have passed you by because you did not subscribe and hit the bell. So don't make that mistake. But as far as this indicator goes, fall in love all over again, traders. Test it. Place it in your own algo, see what it does, put in that work, and go get it.